Welcome back to the War Corral with Drew and Noah. Noah? Last Friday, there was a pep rally at Hurt Elementary. Getting excited for the game and seeing both old and new faces really pumped up everyone's spirits. Next, Drew's going to give us a recap on sports from last week. Drew? Our varsity football team played a hard-fought game with Rockmart last week, but hoped to bounce back next week. The Braves kept Rockmart on their toes during the first half and didn't go down without a fight. The game ended with a score of 47 to 14, but the score does not define the way the game went. The Braves look to get their first win of the season this Friday against a good-looking Central squad. JV football had a home game versus Bremen, but fell just short of losing by a score of 13 to 6. Franklin Jackson, along with Isaiah O'Neill and Dylan Stevens, led the offense most of the game. The Hurt County Middle School Braves football team toppled the Temple Tigers by a score of 38 to 14 Thursday in the home opener of the 2019 season. The Braves dominated the start of the game opening up with a 24-0 lead at halftime. Antoine Carter got the scoring started early with a touchdown run and subsequent two-point play before quarterback Grison Cockrell hooked up with LJ Green on a touchdown pass to make it 14-0. Landon McClendon scored on the second two-point to extend the lead even further. A Sammy Holiday fumble recovery on defense set up the next scoring play from Jonathan Eccles. Echo celebrated his 14th birthday with a long rushing score from QB position on a broken play. Holiday had a monster effort on both sides of the ball with a big first half sack and two point conversion catch to go along with the fumble recovery. The Lady Braves varsity softball team beat Callaway 18 to 10 in a hard fought fight to end to remain undefeated in region play. They also traveled to West Georgia over the weekend to beat Union County 8 to 0 and Noonan 4 to 3. Our JV softball team beat Alexander 9-2 on Wednesday, and the middle school softball Braves beat Bowden 8-4 on Tuesday, and Villarica 18-0 on Thursday. Varsity Volleyball lost against Lamar, Alexander, and Temple last week, but have come very close to a victory more than once and will continue to keep fighting. Cross Country did well last Thursday and the Tuesday after that, so keep on running, Cross Country. Next we have the weather, meme review, the conspiracy theory, and a teacher spotlight. Before that, we had a chat with Coach Treadwell and a few members from the student section. Hey, Eric County, I'm here with Ty Hanna, um, part of the student section. Um, Ty, um, you're one of the biggest influences on the student section this year. Um, you get the crowd really hyped. Um, how do you feel that your influence in the stands helps our guys on the field um, playing-wise? Well, I, I think it brings the school spirit back sometimes. <laughs> Y'all, y'all have a pretty big crowd this year, bigger than the year we've had in the had in the past in the student section. Um, do you think y'all keep that up as the season's going on? I know we we played rough starting out. Do you think that um, us playing rough is like affecting y'all? Are y'all still going to be the same crowd? Well, we've been the same lately, so I don't think nothing's going to change. Well, we look forward to having y'all out there the rest of the season. You know, y'all um, really get us pumped up and um, ready to play. Um, and I mean, what can I say? Student section is bomb. I was like, thanks, Ty. All right. Hi, my name is Presley, and today I'm here with Julianne on the student section. So the student section has been one of the biggest that it has ever been. So why do you think that is? Um, I think the reason why the student section is big this year is because, like, previous years we really didn't have one, and I wanted one before I graduated. And also a lot of schools around us have really big student sections, so I wanted to also have a really big student section. <laughs> What do you think the importance is of having a student section? Well, even whenever we were down, like the past few games, like really bad, <laughs> um, the student section was still screaming for the players because I think that even if they're losing as bad or even winning as good as they are, then they should have support no matter what. Because I feel like student section supports them way more than the fans. Do. So, what is a way that more people could come out and support the student section? What do you mean? <laughs> Just like how could the students like more get students more people come? to come? Um, I really don't know because we could either like post it like more on social media or post it like flyers around the schools or a lot of times it's to do with the themes but honestly like go to Party City and get a five dollar t-shirt like come on <laughs> like there shouldn't be any and if I and you feel if you're a student at Heard County like just come to the student section like I promise you it's fun and you're not gonna regret it. So you guys make sure to go to the student section and back to you guys. Welcome to a perfectly serious episode of Conspiracy Theories. This concerns the most revolutionary statement humanity has faced yet. Is visible light actually visible? Do we really see light, or are we just seeing light that's been reflected off of some other object? If all objects in our world are seen through light being reflected off of them, 
then why would light be any different? This does seem reasonable to assume. We can't actually see light. We only see light that's been reflected. Most likely by being reflected off other light that is denser than normal light. This means there exist two different types of light that contribute to the illusion of visible light, reflective light, and visible light. Visible light is only seen in the presence of reflective light that is just slightly denser than visible light, allowing it to reflect off it and be seen by human eyes. This means that the sun produces these two different types of light, and all lighting appliances do the same. Remember that even your very perception of this world is wrong when science tries to tell you otherwise. This is the truth of visible light. That's all, we ha that's all we have for this very serious conspiracy theory, and we hope that you reflect on this new information. Hope to see you all again next time. Also, Riley, that pun was awful. And so was your outro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hello, Heard County. It's your local weatherman, Jacob Cash, here with the weather again with our new setup. Now, for the weather this week, uh, Monday is going to be mostly sunny with a high of 92 and a low of 65. Uh, Tuesday is going to be mostly sunny with a high of 91 and a low of 65. Uh, Wednesday will be partly cloudy, a uh, slight chance of rain, a high of 91 and a low of 65. And then Thursday, we're going to get some scattered thunderstorms, but it will cool off a bit as highs will be 87, low will be 63. And then Friday, we'll be going back to partly cloudy, and high will be 85 with a low of 63. Uh, you may want to bring your umbrella Thursday, but otherwise, a warm, nice warm week. Now to Jacob with Meme Review. Hola, niños. Por favor, llámale a la policía. Estamos detenidos contra nuestra voluntad. And welcome to Meme Review. I'm Jacob in a very special episode because this is only me, no Michael. Nowhere to be seen. This is what all of you have been waiting for. And the reason Michael is here is not here is because uh, he's not, and I am. So I'm going to start off with my meme, which will be Sully and Mike. It conveys the perfect feeling of uh, disappointment. It reminds me of that one time I said you too to a waiter whenever they said enjoy my food, and then they stared at me. It's the perfect format for at least the next few days for anything weird and wacky. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, a 4 out of 5. One and a half thumbs up. Well, I'll see you guys next time, and <laughs> deuces. This week, varsity football has an away game on Thursday versus Spencer at 7 o'clock, and JV football plays today versus Hanley here at Staples Stadium at 7 o'clock. Middle school football has a game here on Monday at 5 o'clock versus Hanley, and away game Thursday versus Mount Sion at 5.30. Varsity softball has a home game Tuesday versus Bremen at 5.30, which is senior night. They have another game Wednesday at home versus East Coweta at 6 o'clock. Then they have another game Thursday at home versus Central at 5.30. JV softball plays against East Coweta here at 4.30. And the middle school Lady Braves have a home game Tuesday versus Mount Zion and a away game Thursday versus Bowden. Both games start at 5. Varsity and JV volleyball have games Tuesday at home versus Callaway at 5 and 6 o'clock. Cross Country has a meet Thursday at Carrollton High School. And we've got a lot going on this week, so be sure to come out and support all our Braves. That's all for this week, Brave Nation. Tune in next Monday for all your weekly news and reminders. And remember, with pride, go Braves.